about uterine cancer or cancer of the womb. This type of cancer affects individuals who have a uterus, whether they are women or transgender people. This type of cancer cannot affect people who had their wombs removed with a hysterectomy. There are two main varieties of cancer that can affect the uterus. One is called endometrial cancer and the second one is called uterine sarcoma. Endometrial cancer develops from the inside lining of the uterus. Now this is the lining which grows in size and breaks down in each menstrual cycle and when it breaks down causes the bleeding. So cancer that arises from the inside lining or the endometrium of the uterus is called endometrial cancer. This is the commonest variety of uterine cancer. An uncommon variety called the uterine sarcoma develops from the deeper layers of the uterus. Today we are going to discuss endometrial cancer. In most patients, the cause for uterine cancer remains unknown. However, there are certain conditions which increase the risk of women developing uterine cancer. As you know, there are two types of main hormones in a woman. One is called estrogen, one is called progesterone. Estrogen increases the thickness of the lining of the womb or the endometrium. So if the woman's body is exposed to high levels of estrogens during her fertile life, it will increase the risk of developing uterine cancer later on in life. So conditions like obesity, polycystic ovary syndrome, Hormone replacement treatment or oral contraceptive pills which are rich in estrogen. Never having a baby, so these women will have more periods, they will be more exposed to estrogen. Taking tamoxifen for conditions like breast cancer. Early development of periods, so periods starting at the age of 12 or that early and finishing later in life over the age of 55 or over increases the risk of developing uterine cancer because there is more exposure to the hormone estrogen. Diabetes again makes imbalance of the hormone between estrogen and progesterone increases the risk and obviously causes obesity as well. Radiotherapy to the pelvis which is x-ray treatment to the pelvis for treatment of conditions like rectal cancer increase the risk of developing uterine cancer because the uterus sits right in front of the rectum. A genetic condition called Lynch syndrome, which increases the risk of developing bowel cancer in some families, also increases the risk of developing other types of cancer. One of them is uterine cancer. The symptoms of uterine cancer can happen with many other conditions and most of these conditions are benign conditions. So if any woman who has these symptoms, they should not start panicking that they have got uterine cancer. However, if you are in your 50s and you are developing any of these symptoms, or even if you are a bit younger and these symptoms do not go away, then you should seek medical attention. And uterine cancer obviously can happen in elderly age as well. Bleeding happening after menopause. So if you have periods happening again after menopause, or bleeding between periods, spotting between periods, or even heavy bleeding between periods, or getting heavy periods themselves, low abdominal pain or pelvic pain, low back pain, and unusual vaginal discharge. They all should be investigated by the doctor. You should go and see your doctor, and he might want to do more investigations. The diagnosis of uterine cancer starts from examination. Examination involves abdominal examination and also internal examination, which includes vaginal examination and also sometimes rectal examination. Then your doctor will also order some blood test and will probably send you for an ultrasound scan. Ultrasound scan is a jelly scan, which is done um, from the abdomen, but can also be performed transvaginally with a little 
finger sized probe into the vagina which scans the uterus from inside. Once they suspect of uterine cancer, then a biopsy will be arranged. This biopsy can be done without any anesthetic during hysteroscopy, which is a camera into the uterus from the bottom end, very little flexible camera. If that does not give enough results, then the specialist might want to do it under general anesthetic procedure called DNC or dilatation and curettage. Once the diagnosis of uterine cancer is confirmed, the next stage is to stage the disease to see how big the cancer is in the uterus and whether it has spread anywhere else in the body or not, because that what dictates the treatment of the cancer. For that, CT scan, MRI scan, and PET scans are used. The treatment of uterine cancer depends on two main factors. One is stage of the disease. So after all the investigations like hysteroscopy, ultrasound scan, CT scan, chest X-ray, MRI, PET scan, the specialists will know that whether the disease is confined to the uterus or whether it has gone beyond the uterus into surrounding organs, into the lymph glands or elsewhere in the body and the general health of the patient. How fit or how unfit the patient is because more fit the patient, more treatment can be given to the patient. There are two main types of treatments or three main types of treatments which are given to the patient. One is surgery. Surgery obviously involves removing the uterus and also removing sometimes the tubes and the ovaries. Sometimes for advanced uterine cancer, which is involving the rectum and other surrounding structures or the bladder, etc., those structures might need to be removed as well. Localized lymph nodes, if the tumor has gone into those, they will be removed at the same time. Radiotherapy, which is x-ray treatment to the, to the uterus and chemotherapy, both of these can be given either in combination or on their own, but usually given either with surgery. They can be given without surgery if the, if the tumor is not curable or they can be given before surgery to shrink the tumor down to make it more treatable. Other types of treatment like hormone therapy to reduce the levels of estrogen in the body so that cancer does not increase in size that quickly are usually meant for palliation only. They're not meant for cure. So in these patients, either they're not fit for surgery or the disease has gone beyond cure. Again, immune therapy in which medications are given, which increases our own immunity and that immunity fights the cancer. Again, given in certain centers and certainly at the moment not meant for cure. So main curative treatment are surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy provided the cancer from the stage point of view is curable and the patient is fit for treatment. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, then please do remember to give us a like and do remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I shall see you soon. Take care.